Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the one who is praised unconditionally. And we ask Allah azza wa to send his salat and salam upon the one who was chosen as a rahmatan lil alameen, a mercy to all of the worlds. Alhamdulillah, brothers and sisters, we have gone from a long way uh, from the beginning of our series and we are now winding down. This is going to be uh, the finale of our series uh, about uh, the uh, the day of judgment from the Quran and the Sunnah. And uh, to Today's lecture uh, will also be the precursor to our next series, which is going to be about uh, the descriptions of heaven and hell uh, in the Quran and Sunnah. And Alhamdulillah, I thank Allah Azza wa for this entire series that we've done, uh, which really is a continuous series, the signs of the Day of Judgment. We did that entire uh, series, and then we moved on to the Barzakh, and we finished the entire series of the Barzakh, and then we moved on to the Day of Judgment. And then inshallah ta'ala, from uh, the future series we will be doing, inshallah ta'ala, the descriptions of heaven and hell. So today is going to be the last series of this uh, particular uh, lecture series and it deals with the final step right before uh, the entering of the gates of Jannah and it is in fact uh, one of the most interesting and also one of the most discussed uh, of the stages of the Day of Judgment and it is the, uh, the stage that is called the Sirat or the uh, bridge. And uh, out of all of the aspects of the Day of Judgment, this one has a special status because it has become a point of the books of theology. Almost every single uh, classical book that has been written about Islamic theology, it mentions that of the beliefs of Islam or of the beliefs of mainstream Orthodox Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah is to believe in the Sirat. And that is because uh, in early Islam, some of the groups, they, they, they doubted or they denied. And so it became a hallmark of those who affirm the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that because we affirm the Sunnah and the Sunnah has come with the belief of the Sirat. And so this has become a doctrinal issue, an issue of theology, of Aqeedah, faith that we find in almost every book of Islamic uh, theology. And of course, the term Sirat is used in the Quran for multiple meanings, primarily it is used for the Sirat al-Mustaqim or the straight path. That's something that is understood. We're not talking about that Sirat. We're talking about another uh, Sirat. And that Sirat is an actual bridge that will be over Jahannam. It will be connecting the people that are on the Day of Judgment's actual site and planes. Uh, it is going to connect the planes of the Day of Judgment to the gates of Jannah. And the planes of the Day of Judgment, where they, will they be? We do not know. In fact, there's a hadith, uh, Aisha, radiallahu anha uh, was uh, narrated this hadith as a Sahih Bukhari that somebody asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, you know the Quran says that on the day of judgment this earth is going to be substituted for another earth. Yawma tubaddar adu ghayr al-ard. And so uh, he asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where will mankind be on that day when there is no earth? other than this earth, that this earth is going to be gone. What, where will they be? And so our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, listen to this, هُمْ فِي الظُّلْمَةِ دُونَ الْجِسْرِ They are going to be in a darkness that is right before the bridge. Okay, this hadith is in Sahih Bukhari. They're going to be in a darkness that is right before the bridge. So he called it Jisr. And Jisr is a more specific term for a bridge. So Sirat and Jisr are both synonymous for what we're talking about right now. And that is an actual bridge that will be suspended over Jahannam. On one side of the bridge is the plains of the Day of Judgment. And on the other side is the gates of Jannah. The only way to get to the gates of Jannah, the only way to get to that area is going to be over the uh, bridge. Now, before we get to the issue of Sirat, therefore, we need to then talk about this issue of Hum fil Dhulmati. They shall be in darkness uh, right before the coming of the bridge. So this hadith tells us there's something called a darkness, a stage of darkness. And this is a very important phase of the Day of Judgment. It's a very important uh, one of the, uh, the, the stages that will occur. And this stage is actually explicitly mentioned in the Quran, not once but twice. Two times the Quran explicitly mentions this stage of darkness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hadid verses 12 to 15, that on that day you shall see the believing men and women. Light will be shining from in front of them and from their right sides here. And they shall be given glad tidings of heaven uh, under which rivers are flowing. Indeed, that is the biggest victory. On that day, the hypocrites are going to call out to the believers and the hypocrites are going to say, allow us 
to take guidance from your light. Unduruna naqta bismin nurikum. The hypocrites will not be given light. They're going to see the light of the believers. And so they're going to say, let us follow your light and take us to Jannah. And so Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, قِيلَ رُجِعُ وَرَاءَكُمْ فَالْتَمِسُوا نُورًا It will be said to them, get away from here, go find your own light. And there shall be a large barrier between them and the believers. And on one side of the barrier is going to be rahma, and on the other side is going to be uh, uh, punishment from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So this verse tells us that there will be a time frame where there will be no light other than the light coming from the bodies of the believers. And this is going to be right before the Sirat as the Hadith tells us, right? So we learn from this that towards the end of Judgment Day, we already talked about uh, the Buruz, the Hisab, the Mizan, the Hawd, the Kawth, all of this we talked about. We talked about uh, the issue of every single group following its deity. We talked about Allah Azawajal Himself coming down, showing the sign to the believers. The believers are then being taken uh, to, uh, along with the believers. You have, we said, the Fasaqa, the the, the sinners and you have the munafiqun all of them meaning anybody who claimed the name of Islam in this world anybody who put the label of Muslim is going to be in that group now that group is consisting of people who will go to Jannah directly and it is consisting of people who will go through Jahannam to uh, Jannah and it is going to consist of munafiqun who will not even get close to Jannah they were not believers they didn't have a shred of Iman but they're going to be separated at this stage. How will they be separated? So this verse tells us, and Surah Tahrim as well, Surah Tahrim verse 8 tells us the same thing. يَوْمَ لَا يُخْزِ اللَّهُ النَّبِيَّ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَ نُورُهُمْ يَسْعَى بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَبِأَيْمَانِهِمْ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا أَتْمِمْ لَنَا نُورَنَا وَاغْفِرْ لَنَا إِنَّكَ عَلَى كُلِ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ وَمَا جَعْنَا مِنْهُمْ So on that day Allah is saying, the believers are not going to be humiliated by Allah. And uh, the humiliation here is to be taken to Jahannam. They will not be humiliated. And you will find light, once again, light coming from them, in front of them, and on their right hand sides. The meaning of right hand sides here doesn't mean the left is going to be uh, uh, black and dark. It's, it means that will be a man, it, it means like a positive light. It means a light that is a blessed light. So the right hand side is the side of blessings in the Arabic language. That's what it means here. They're going to say, Oh Allah, perfect our light and forgive us, you are capable of all things. Oh Allah, perfect our light and forgive us, you are capable of all things. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained this stage in a hadith in Sahih Muslim reported by Jabir ibn Abdullah that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, everybody at that stage, the mu'min and the munafiq is going to be given some type of light and then they're going to follow uh, each other onto the jisr, out onto the bridge. And on the bridge, there's going to be kalalibun wa hasakun. There's going to be hooks and there's going to be uh, uh, thorns and whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes will be dragged in through those uh, thorns. ثم, uh, نور المنافقين, ثم, uh, then the light of the munafiqeen will be extinguished and the light of the believers will save the believers, okay? So we learn here that there will be, at the very beginning, everybody's gonna be given some light. Now, remember here that when the Prophet ﷺ was asked, where will the believers be? He said, they will be in darkness before the bridge. Darkness right before the bridge. So, everybody wants to go to Jannah, but to get to Jannah, there's a bridge. And the bridge, and you are all immersed in darkness. So you need light to find the bridge, and you need light to cross over the bridge, and you need light to guide you into Jannah. That light, where will it come from? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless Iman to become light. Your Iman and my Iman will become our torch. It will become our light. And as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَيُعْطُونَ نُورَهُمْ عَلَىٰ قَدَرِ أَعْمَالِهِمْ They shall be given, this, this hadith is in uh, the Mustadrak of Al-Hakim, they shall be given light, each one in accordance with their good deeds. So some of them, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, their light will be like a massive mountain in front of them. Some of them, their light will be even more than a mountain. Some of them will be like, the light will be like a, a, a palm tree, a good palm tree. And some of them will be given 
lesser than this until finally the person that is given the lowest light will be his his uh, uh, the the toe the thumb uh, the the toe if you like of the feet the toe is going to to light up the Prophet said yuli umaratan wa yutfi umara is going to light up and then go out light up and go out and every time the toe lights up he's going to take one step forward then the toe becomes dark and he's going to stay there not knowing whether the light's going to come back or not so this hadith tells us another thing and that is that light is going to be given to the believers in accordance with their iman and their taqwa and their good deeds and all of this is a manifestation of Allah's protection and mercy as you protected the commandments of Allah and as you showed your piety in this world so too you shall be protected in the next world in proportionality is it not fair dear Muslims is it not fair that the righteous are rewarded is it not fair that the ones who went through pain and suffering and were patient shall be given a manifestation of that blessing and therefore according to one's iman and taqwa they shall be rewarded throughout the day of judgment and then in Jannah itself. And of the rewards is that the more was a person's iman, the better was a person's deeds, the more kinder, the more rituals, the more charity, the more everything, so too the more light is going to be. And we have a number of uh, uh, things that are mentioned now. I have given these lectures in other uh, series, you can listen to them. Uh, I spoke about uh, I, I gave a tafsir of the verse of the, the uh, Allahu Nurus Samawati Wal and I mentioned there that uh, the concept of light in the grave and light on the day of judgment and light uh, towards Jannah. And I mentioned a series of actions that increase the light of them is to sit after uh, the salawat and do dhikr. Of them is to walk to uh, the prayers uh, or to drive in our case, especially Fajr prayer and Isha prayer. Praying Fajr and Isha uh, in the masjid is one of the ways to perfect our light on the day of judgment. And there are other things that are given uh, as well uh, by our scholars, Sadaq and other things are mentioned uh, in some of the books about how we can increase our light. The point being that at this point in time, when hisab is done, when mizan is finished, when the scrolls have been handed and the people know that they now have to basically cross over, they shall be immersed in darkness and then they shall be given a light. And that light will be proportional to their iman and that light will then guide them to the sirat and then over the sirat or we seek Allah's refuge, they will not be given a light like the hypocrites, the light will be taken away from them, and they will therefore, they cannot find the bridge, and they will then be f uh, thrown into uh, Jahannam. Now, this is the issue of the light and the darkness. Now we get to the issue of the bridge, or sirat, or the jisr. And the issue of the sirat, is it mentioned in the Quran or not? Well, uh, the majority of scholars say that the Sirat is mentioned in the Quran. However, it is mentioned implicitly, not explicitly. The phrase or the word, the Jisr or Sirat does not occur with the bridge. Of course, the word Sirat occurs for Sirat al-Mustaqim and others, uh, but not the Sirat that is over Jahannam. That there's no explicit reference in the Quran, there's rather an implicit reference. And that implicit reference, please look this up, Surah Maryam, verse 71. Look it up yourselves. وَإِن مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا كَانَ عَلَى رَبِّكَ حَتْمًا مَقْضِيَّ Everyone amongst you shall do wurud, wariduha. Now what does warid mean? So our scholars of the past, especially from the time of the Sahaba, there were two opinions. One position was that warid means to go through. And so there were some of the Sahaba who said, every single human shall go through Jahannam. Some of them will be affected and some will go through without being affected, but they shall go through. However, the majority interpretation and the interpretation that then became the standard uh, uh, from pretty much everybody in our times believes this, this is now the standard interpretation. وَإِن مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا Everyone amongst you shall cross over it, not go through it. So, warid here does not mean to go through Jahannam. Warid here means to go over Jahannam. And so the Quran mentions Jahannam, and then Allah says, every single one amongst you without exception is going to warid. And what this means is that everybody is going to uh, you know, uh, uh, go over Jahannam. Uh, even the believers are going to go over Jahannam. As for the hypocrites and as for the uh, the uh, the kafir, they will enter Jahannam. But even the believer shall go over Jahannam. And this going over, this is the concept of the uh, sirat. And 
The concept of the Salat is very explicitly mentioned in numerous ahadith and that's why it became an issue of theology. You know when you read the earliest books of theology, sometimes people are astounded like why is this an issue of theology? Why is for example wiping over the socks mentioned? Why is for example uh, the Mizan and the Hawd and the Salat mentioned? And the response is, it's not even so much the issues as it is the methodology. And the methodology is that uh, there was a group of Muslims, uh, they are still Muslims at the time, that they rejected the concept of following hadith in the sense that they said, we're not going to trust these hadith. And so they, uh, they didn't reject, by the way, the concept of sunnah. They rejected the preservation. There's two separate things and I talked about this in other lectures. So the other group of uh, the mainstream Muslims, I, what we call Sunni Muslims, Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah, they said, how can you reject these hadith because they are the Sunnah and the Sunnah is a part of Islam. And so they began to list the things that the Sunnah comes with that you must believe in. And that is why you have these issues like the Hawd, uh, the fountain, uh, you have the Salat, you have the Mizan. And they said, how can you reject all of this? The Sunnah comes with it in so many ahadith. So it became a point of theology that they said that to believe in the Salat is a matter of being a good Muslim. If you reject the Salat, then you have bad theology and you are going away from uh, mainstream traditional orthodox um, Islam. So we said the belief in the Salat is something that is explicitly mentioned in dozens of treatises of early Islam that we believe in a bridge over uh, Jahannam. And this is something again if you want to, uh, these can be, you know, we don't have time but I can quote you many things from uh, Sufyan al-Thawri, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Ibn Khuzayma, uh, Ibn Batta, so many of the early Ur scholars uh, and of course as well uh, this is in the uh, the uh, Aqid of um, uh, um, Tabari and others, uh, and uh, many of the early uh, scholars, uh, they have treatises about uh, Aqidah, and this is a part of that uh, treatise, of course, by the way, Tahawi, which is one of the most universally accepted uh, creeds of early Islam. Uh, Imam al Tahawi also mentions that of the beliefs of Ahl Sunnah is they believe in the Sirat. Uh, and so this is also mentioned over there. So, of the ahadith that mentions the Sirat, uh, one of them we've already mentioned in a previous lecture. Anas ibn Malik said, O Messenger of Allah, where should I find you on the Day of Judgment? So he said, first find me at the Salat. If you don't know where I am, find me at the Salat. He said, if you don't find me there, he goes at the Mizan. He said, if you don't find me there, he said, well then, at the Hawd, at the water pool, for I shall definitely be at one of these three places. And SubhanAllah, footnote here, dear Muslims, how beautiful. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam throughout the entire Day of Judgment is going to be concerned with his Ummah, either feeding them water and making sure they're taken care of on the Day of Judgment, or making shafa'a for them at the mizan itself, that the mizan should be heavy for every Muslim, or making dua for them to cross over the Sirat and enter Jannah. His entire Day of Judgment, SubhanAllah, is going to be for his Ummah. It's not going to be for himself. The whole making dua and helping and whatnot, it is for the care and concern of his ummah. And that's exactly what Allah says in the Quran, that a messenger has come to you, he is more concerned about you than he is about himself. Azizun alimadum harisun alaykum bil mu'mineen ra'ufur rahim. And we see this, that throughout the day of judgment, our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be at the forefront, always doing uh, things for his ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grant us his shafa'a on that day. So the point being that, he mentions, I will be at the Sirat. And uh, in a hadith in Sahih Bukhari, uh, which we mentioned last time, the hadith of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, the long hadith I mentioned it in the last lecture, the Prophet said, Thumma al-jisr. Then the bridge will be placed over Jahannam, and I shall be the first one to cross it. He said this. And the Prophets, all of them, will be saying, Sallim, Allahumma Sallim, peace, O oh Allah, peace. And there shall be thorns, he said, like the bushes of Sa'dan. Then he said to the Sahaba, have you seen the bushes of Sa'dan? But they're going to be a size that only Allah knows. And people will be snatched, each one in accordance with their deeds. And the hadith goes on. By the way, the Sa'dan plant is a very well-known plant. It's not in Hijaz, it's in Najd. And uh, you've all seen pictures of it. And even here in uh, the Midwest, uh, you sometimes you see a similar plant. The Sa'dan plant, it has thorns. Uh, that are not just one thorn, rather the, 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 the thorn is multi-pronged. So there are thorns coming from different sides of the fruit, it's not just one. And therefore you cannot pick it from any side. If you pick it, there are sharp 
very spiny, very uh, uh, prickly, and they're multi multiple size, not just one side. So he said they will be like that, but a size will be much bigger than only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. In the other hadith, in Sahih Muslim, he said they're going to be curved hooks that are coming, coming out of Jahannam and dragging people down. These are the munafiqun. So they get to the sirat. They get to the sirat and then the hooks will come and drag them down. It is also possible that some of the people taken will be from the fasaqa, from the sinful uh, believers uh, we seek Allah's refuge and they're going to be going temporarily into Jahannam. As, will, as for the munafiqun, those hooks will drag them to the lowest parts of Jahannam because Allah says in the Quran, in the munafiqina fi darkil asfali min an nar. The munafiqun, the hypocrites, will be in the lowest, lowest, lowest parts of Jahannam and they have a separate punishment for them. We'll talk about that when we get to that uh, concept. But the fasaqa or the sinful of the Muslims, they shall not be dragged into the depths of Jahannam. They shall be in the peripheries of Jahannam for however long Allah wants them to be. And then as we explained in our last lesson, and also we'll explain again when we get to the issue of the fire of hell and discuss it, they shall then be taken out from that um, area. So. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that in one hadith that Amana and Rahim will stand on each side of the Sirat. So Amana means integrity. Amana means speaking the truth. Amana means fulfilling the covenants. Amana means being true to your word. And Rahim means the family. So the two main things that will help you cross over the Sirat is your Amana which really is your akhlaq as well, and your rahim, which is how you deal with your family, your, your spouse, your children, your parents, your extended family. These are the two main things, as Ibn Hajar says in, in this commentary of this hadith, these are the two main things that will help you to cross over the sirat in a positive or in a good manner. So dear Muslim, be careful about both of these issues and give each of them their uh, due. And then he said, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and then people will cross over at different speeds. The first of them, shall cross like lightning. Then he said, the second will be like the twinkling of an eye, then like a fast bird, then like a horse, and then like a very quick runner and jogger. And he kept on going until he said, the last one is going to be crawling, a very slow crawl on all fours. So we learn from this as well, that there will be batches going over the sirat. And as-sabiqoon as sabiqun the first to cross the sirat are going to be the most righteous of the people, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself, and then the most righteous uh, uh, of the of the companions, and the rest waladina tabaruhum bi ihsan. So even the order of crossing over the sirat is something that is based upon one's iman and taqwa. Dear Muslims, we learn all of these things over and over again. I hope that it has an impact on our lives. We don't want to be at the very end. We don't want to be crawling when we cross the Sirat. We don't want to be our toe is blinking on and off. Do you want that to happen to you? Obviously you don't. So then why don't we perfect our Salah? Why don't we wake up for Fajr and try to pray in the Masjid? Why don't we sit after the Salah and do our Adhkar? Why don't we perfect our Wudu so that our Prophet Sallallahu can recognize us? And the one who does this consistently throughout his life, Insha'Allah Ta'ala, Allah Azza wa Jal is not going to uh, turn away from the one who turns to him. The one who spent a lifetime doing good deeds with the intention that I want our Nabi Sallallahu to recognize me. I want to cross over the Sirat in a quick manner. Then inshaAllah Ta'ala, it is impossible that Allah will then turn away from that request because Allah is Arhamur Rahimeen and Allah is Kareem and Allah gives when the person Ask. So I hope dear Muslims that when you listen to these lectures and you're taking notes and you're paying attention that it's not just tidbits and information that you just store in your mind, but rather it impacts us. And again, I reiterate, I know this is a bit of a tangent here, I reiterate the purpose of all of this knowledge is so that it translates into an actual Iman of the heart, which then translates into our relationship with Allah and our relationship with others. All of this knowledge of the Day of Judgment and of Barzakh and of Heaven and Hell, all of this, of what use is it? 